Hey Facebook, Steve Woody here, Midday Mastery, episode number 34. And today I actually want to answer a question. A question come in and asked, how do I leave my nine to five to start my own business? And I thought it was a really good question. And I thought for Friday today, we do a bit of motivation, inspiration, uh, get away from a bit of strategy for a change. Um, I'm going to show you a really quick story, uh, tell you about what happened to me, because I've got a lot of people now that follow me who don't actually know where I come from. So I'm not going to bore you with the old story, but I'm going to share something with you which I think is really, really important, especially if you're thinking of starting up a business. The first thing I'm going to say is this is not easy. This is not one of those things, like if you see people online and they're like, I've made all this money, I've done all this, I'm living this amazing life. I'm telling you now that nine times out of ten it's bullshit. Most of the people online that are presenting themselves as being successful are doing that to get success. Like they have to first present themselves as successful so that people trust in them and they buy from them so they can actually be successful. Most people, the ones who really go and like work hard and get the success and then come back and like document and show how they did it, like it, it, it's there's not many people like that. I'm just letting you know. Most people are out there winging it, they're trying to figure it out. And it's a really brutal game. So, my advice, my top tip is going to be, um, first of all, if you've got a 9 to 5, congratulations. Like You've got some stability, you've got some income. It may not be what you want right now, but at least you have that. You're already like miles above the people that don't have that, because there's a lot of people that don't even have a job. And that's just in this country. Like You look in other countries, there's people that can't even get a job, and when they do... It's not going to be anywhere near what you're earning. So at least we have a minimum wage in England. I know in America you do too. And I know that we have a lot of opportunities, even though if you can't see them. So what basically happened to me is back in 2012, I went to UPW. It's called Unleash the Power Within. It's a seminar by Tony Robbins. It's his entry-level uh, product that uh, takes you into his funnel, where he upsells you different products and different services. Uh, but it's a fantastic event. And what happened is that I left that event with quite a different mindset to a lot of other people because what I noticed after that event and also in the sort of ongoing weeks on social media is that people were saying, I need to quit my job, I need to quit my job, I need to quit my job. And like that was just a, a reoccurring thing where people were saying, I need to quit my job, I need to go and leave my job, um, I need to become an entrepreneur. And like there was this whole thing around Tony Robbins empowering people to find their purpose and find their passion. And the reality is that when I come out of UPW for the first time back in 2012, I actually said, I need a fucking job. I need to go and get a job. Like, I need a job. I need to work. I need to earn money. Because I can tell you one thing. It's a lot easier to start a business, whether it's an online business, whether it's brick and mortar, whatever it is. It's a lot easier to start a business when you have financial backing, when you have a safety net, when you have money behind you. So it doesn't have to be a lot. But as long as you're not in scarcity, like I'm not saying you can't do it. Just hear me out here. I'm not saying you can't do it from a place of scarcity because sometimes, you know, when we're pushed, and this is one of the things Tony says, we do things, it's either out of motivation or desperation. Normally it's the latter, right? We get so desperate, we're like, shit, we need to do something. And so we change. Look, that's how I made all that money last month. I was desperate. I was in a place where I was like, I need to start paying off this debt. How do I do it? And I started looking for other things that were always there. If I'd have motivated myself, I could have done it years ago. But sometimes, you know, the motivation doesn't quite kick in and you need to get to that place where you hit rock bottom and then when you get there, you can rebuild yourself into a better version. And so I'm not saying that you can't do it, you know, that you, you can't do it without money, but I've done it with money and I've done it without money. And I can tell you now that without money, it's fucking hard. It's difficult because the perception that people have of you, the, 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 the things you have to learn, the things you have to do, the time you end up wasting, it gets really, it's challenging. It's really challenging. And so what happened for me was I went and got a job. Now I had a car at the time, but it wasn't a very good car. And I was driving to work. So it was probably about it was about three or four miles. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a long distance in a car, but it was about three or four miles. And I was living in Brentwood in Essex, and I was driving lorries. I got a job as a lorry driver. CJ, how you doing? Hello. And I would drive down to work in the morning at like five, six in the morning. I'd get in a lorry. I'd go and do these multi-drop rounds, and then I'd come back. And whenever I'd come back, I'd sit back in my... In, well, I was living in Brentwood at the time. I had a housemate, and I'd start planning out what do I want to do, how am I going to do it, you know, I want to... I wanna, I, at the time, I, was doing, um, I, I wasn't doing t-shirt printing anymore. I was actually doing business cards. I wanted to sell business cards because I, 
the websites was kind of an idea, it was a concept, but it wasn't something that I was actually like, I was just getting into that world. It was like I was doing my first website, I, I wasn't going to do it as a business. And so, like, that was in 2012. So you can see the difference, like, what a few years makes, right? Because when I started out, my car, um, I can't remember how it happened or when it happened, but I blew the head gasket in the car. It was an old, it was an MG ZS, it was an old blue one with a big spoiler on the back. Um, and I blew the head gasket, and I had a choice that I had to make at that point. Because it was like three or four miles to work at five in the morning. And I'm juicing at this point. I'm hyped up from Tony Robbins. And I decided, fuck it. I'm going to run to work. So I was running to work in the morning. I was going to work. I was doing a full day's work. I was running home. And then I was carrying on with the business. Because I decided I didn't want to do it anymore. I was like, I was all hyped up at first. And everyone at work thought I was nuts. You've got these guys who are like, 50s and 60s, smoking 20 a day in a lorry with us, who were just like, what's that green shit you're drinking? Why are you doing it? What's the point? Like, you're nuts, you're stupid. Like, all of those things, you know? Friends that didn't want to know me anymore, like, I don't want to know you anymore. Friends disowning me. So I started questioning myself internally, am I doing the right thing? What am I doing? Why am I doing it? The point I'm trying to get at is that at any point there, I could have quit. I could have gone and got a different job. I could have not gone to work. I could have signed up. I could have done so many other things. But I decided I was just going to push through. And there's like a lot of other stuff before this that's happened. So I'm just telling you this because I had a 9 till 5. I was working 9 till 5. And then I started my company. I started my company because I had an identity crisis. If you look at my company number and you trace back my company records, I registered my company in 2013. So we're talking here, I've got this job in the middle of 2012. It was a whole year before I registered my company. I built a couple of websites, I started playing, I started learning, I started going, right, what am I going to do? I'm going to build websites. Okay, I need to learn. How am I going to build websites? What do I need to learn? And I started just absorbing all of this information and learning and learning and learning and learning everything I could about what platform I was going to use. All the different platforms out there, I learned how to code HTML, I learned PHP, I learned CSS, I learned Drupal, Joomla, I learned WordPress. Um, Twitter Bootstrap, I don't even know if it was around back then, but I know I learned all of the platforms and I decided what was going to be the best thing for me. And that wasn't posted on Facebook. I was posting, but it was tripe. It was crap. It was just, you know, talking to friends, attention seeking, having a laugh. There was no business. There was no promoting my business. No, I build websites. It was none of what I'm doing now. This was like me just underground learning, figuring shit out. Then... In 2013, when I launched my company in March 2013, I registered a limited company. I didn't even have a business. I had nothing. I had, I, had, I had nothing at all. Like, it was the most stupid thing I could have possibly done was register a limited company at that time. There was no need for it. I could have just been self-employed, traded as a sole trader. But because of this identity crisis that I had, when I split up with my partner, because of this identity crisis I had when I, I disowned my family, I didn't speak to my family for three years. Because I walked away from everything, I walked away from my job, my, I walked away from my business, my partner, the family, I walked away from everything, started again, ground zero. Last time I declared myself homeless, 2011, it was at that point, okay, it was uh, 2011, it was October the, uh, 1st, October the 31st, 2011, that was when I said I'm not going to do it anymore. Then I got a house, then I sorted myself out, worked on me, then I went to UPW, then I got a job, then I was working, earning money, paying the bills, then... A year after that, then I decided I'm going to start a company. And it was a stupid thing to do. And if you look at my company records, I registered Steve Woody Limited. I, re I don't know why, because I had an identity crisis, I thought if I register my name, then no one can take that away from me. And so that sat dormant for 12 months. I didn't do anything with it. I was embarrassed. It was like, I, I, I've still got these images. I was like, I was going to create a holding company to hold all my other companies. And I was thinking about all these great things I was going to do. Like, I'll have a holding company. And the holding company will look after all my companies. And I have a company doing this. And, a company. and it was like, what a fool. What an absolute fool. I had no business. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just distracting myself with these pipe dreams when all I really needed to do was just get out there and start building websites. Like, I didn't need anything. Like, published is better than perfect. I'm sitting here trying to map out all of these plans and get all this inspiration and all these ideas and I'm listening to these seminars and I'm, I was literally at that point in my life, I was going to bed with a Tony Robbins podcast in my ear every single night. I was listening to Tony Robbins. I was waking up. I was listening to audiobooks, podcasts, all day long, every day. I stole every single personal development program I could. I'm not afraid to admit it either. I didn't pay for anything because I didn't have the money at the time. 
I stole everything. I was like, right, give me that, give me that. Have you got this course? Give me this course. I just begged, borrowed, still don't, torrents, whatever I could. Got everything, learned, absorbed it, and promised that one day I would pay it back. Promised that one day, when I was in a position where I'd sorted myself out, that I'd help others. And that's what I do, and I've held that word, and I do that. Because I know what it's like to be at the bottom of the barrel. I've held my word that I will make something of my life, and that I will give back to others, and that's why I do what I do. So my point is that I had a job. I had my nine to five, and the question I was asked is, how do you balance your nine to five with running a business? It's quite simple. You go to work nine to five, and then when you come home, you should become Batman. Have an alter life. Have another thing that you do in the evenings. You have a choice. If you decide to log on to Netflix, that's a choice. If you decide that you're going to be on Facebook, that's a choice. If you go down to the pub with your friends, that's a choice. If you sit there pining over crap that you've you know, got in your past that's holding you back, that's a choice. They're all choices that you make. We've all got the same amount of hours in a day. We all do the same things. How you spend that time is totally up to you. If you're exhausted because you're working, then eat better. Make better choices. Because I can tell you now, I can go to bed at one in the morning, I can wake up like I did at half four this morning, and I'm pumped up, and I feel good. And I'm doing it because my nutrition's getting better. I'm not perfect. I still flag, I still eat some crap, but I'm better. My exercise is getting better. I'm exercising now every day, so I feel it. I feel good, I feel strong. It's this mindset that really, really helps. And also, clients, like Colin. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Like, client, I have the most amazing clients. I love every single, like, I, I mean, I, I genuinely love my clients. This isn't just like a, oh, their clients are giving me money. Like, this, I love them because I love what they're doing. I love what they stand for. You know, when I have a bad day, they accept it. They understand it. When I have a good day, they're there to support me, to celebrate me. They're my friends. I've built this community of people that I work with because I want them to succeed. That's what gets me out of bed in the morning. So when you're driven by doing that, like, I didn't know that. When I was building websites, I don't want to build websites. I can't stand building websites. I don't enjoy it. I don't want to do that. I want people to have, a, I like, I, my thing is giving people a good experience. If I can give people a great experience, then I'm happy. That's me. That's what I love doing. That's why I like surprising people. That's why I like going and doing crazy things. That's why I like blagging things so I can get things so we can have a great experience. And the thing is, for people to have a good experience, they need to be in a good frame of mind, they need money, so the business needs to be successful, they need a website, the website needs to work, so I kind of feel like I fit in there, because that's my expertise, that's what I do. But I didn't have that at the start. When I was driving that truck and figuring out my business, and I launched my company, and I was looking at everything I was going to do, I hadn't got a clue, I couldn't have possibly told you I was going to be sitting here with a book, and a workbook, and online courses, and coaching clients, and going through these processes with people. I would never have seen it. Never could have seen it. But I'm here. And the reason I'm here is because I just kept going consistently, day after day after day. Some days I fell over, some days I didn't want to get up, some days I got up, some days I was running, some days I was walking. But I just kept going. I never give up. The only way you lose this game is if you quit. That's it. The only way you lose is if you quit. As long as you keep going, doesn't matter how far ahead you are, doesn't matter how everyone else is doing in the race, doesn't matter how many views you've got, doesn't matter how many likes you've got, doesn't matter how many people are subscribed to you, it's bullshit, no one cares. The only thing that, or on Instagram they care, but apart from that, the only thing that matters is that you're getting content out there that's relevant to your audience, that they can understand and appreciate and use, and they can remember you as being the person that delivered it to them and that got them through the point of wherever they are. If you can take someone from A to B, that's all you need to do. You don't need to set up a business for that. All you need to do is know one thing more than the person who's learning from you. All you guys, in terms of like building your online businesses, all, all I need to know is one thing that you don't. That's it. If I know one thing that you don't and I can teach that to you and I can impart that knowledge on you and you can use that, then that's, that's it. That's, that's the game. That's all we do. Now... The way that I work is I like to take things that are normally quite overwhelming, quite complicated, quite frustrating. I like to break them down to make them really simple. I do it so I can understand the process because I like to have a really clear understanding. Like I'll break something down like several times so that I really get it. And then I'll rebuild it in a really simple way so that others can go, oh, that was easy. That's all I do. That's, that's, what, that's what our whole business is based on. Like becoming an online master but doing it in a way that is you know, not so stressful and overwhelming. The challenge is that systems online, 
they're, they're reinvented every five minutes. Like, there's always something new coming out. There's always something like, look at this and look at this and look at that. So you need to forget about the systems because systems are always going to change. You need to th forget about everything you're doing except for, at the very start, yourself. Because your business that you want to build, whatever that is, starts with you. You are a reflection, or your business, should I say, is a reflection of you as a person. If you're a crap leader, you'll have a crap team. You know, if you're crap in business, you'll have a crap business. If you're crap at doing the finances, you'll be crap with money. It's like, you've got to get people in that can help you. You've got to get people in that align to your values. You've got to get people that you can work with. You can't do this on your own. You see, like, you look at these people out there, like, take Gary Vaynerchuk, for example. If you think for a moment that Gary Vaynerchuk does everything on his own, you're a fool. He has an entire team in London. He has an entire team in New York dedicated purely to putting content out for him. You know, he has two cameramen following him around every single day, recording everything. And then he has a team that edit. He has a team that publish. He has a team that manage. That's not even his business. That's just what he's putting out there. He's got his business as well. Any successful entrepreneur or businessman knows the leverage of systems and teams. You have to do that. But you can't do that unless you're in a strong place. You need to be solid. There's too many people out there, too many of you now that are watching this who, you know, I want to start up a business. I want to start up a business. I want to run a business. That's great. I love it. I think there's never been a better time to run a business than right now. I think this is the best time in human history for you as an individual to have an idea and to turn it into money. I think it's, I think it's brilliant. But the challenge is that people want it really quickly. They're not, they're not prepared to put in the work. People just want the, the, the winning lottery ticket. And I'm not interested in that. I don't care. If you want a winning lottery ticket, you just want to make some money, then good luck. What I want is someone who's like, I've got this purpose. I've got this passion. I've got this thing that I want to do, but I don't know how to do it. Like, it's here. It's here. It's like, I know I want to do something, but I just don't know how to get it out there. They're the people I love. Because they're the people that are going to be successful regardless of whether I help them or not. They'll find a way. You've only got to take the interview I did with Roberta the other day. This was a great example. Now, Roberta, was I, I could see that the moment I met her, she was going to be successful regardless of whether I helped her or not. I knew, just by talking to her, I knew I, I could help her get there quicker. Like, I knew that. But I knew that regardless of whether I helped her or not, she was going to be successful because she'd been let down before and she'd, she'd had people that had screwed her over and yet she kept going. And she was like, I'm going to find something that works and I'm just going to get myself out there. And so that's why I don't, you know, I joke about it. But I don't judge people that are using Wix. I don't judge people on Squarespace. I don't judge people that have got bad design. I don't judge people that haven't got a good copy or that aren't very good at selling. I don't judge people that make mistakes because I'm human and I do it myself. And so the only thing I can say to you is if you've got a job, at least you've got an income. Get the job, get the income, and like instantly, whatever you're doing at the moment, wherever you are in your life, just say to yourself, right, that's it. Next paycheck, I'm taxing myself. Because you pay your tax anyway. You pay your national insurance, you pay your tax. I want you to add another tax onto your paycheck, 20%. So you're already paying 20%. I want you to add another 20% on. That goes into a pot and you never, ever, 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 ever touch it. Ever. Never touch it. Because when you've got a pot of money sitting there that you've built up, after a while, it'll be hard at first, but after three, six, nine, twelve months, however long it takes, you'll have a pot of money sitting there. And the only thing that you can do with that money is invest it. Invest it in yourself. Invest it in your business. I'm not saying waste it. I'm not saying throw it away. Not pay for a logo with it. But invest it in a business. All right? Just look at the picture. Look at what you want to create. And do it with some money. Because you're going to have a much better experience when you've got a bit of financial stability behind you when you go in to set up whatever it is you want to set up. I'll give you another example. I had a gentleman yesterday, I'm not going to mention any names, but he sent me a message and he said, look, I really want to have a chat with you. He said, I'm saving up to do your course. I'm saving up. I want to do your course on the 1st of May. I'm putting my money together. I'm saving up. Um, I just need to know, like, I need to make sure this is the right thing. And I sent him a message and I said, brother, let me tell you this right now. You're not doing my course. I'm not going to take you on the 1st of May. Because if you're saving for it, you're not ready for it. I'm not the sort of thing that people save up to and come to with and throw my money into it and hope it works. Because there's other costs. There's other things that people... Like you need advertising budgets. You need to buy systems. You need to buy plugins. You maybe need design, content. You need developers. You need a team around you. Like, I get the best out of that situation and I'll help you take your products and services to the next level. But I'm not doing it from scarcity. I'm not doing it from lack anymore. I've done it. I've been there. 
I know how fucking hard that is. So you need to have money behind you to start with. Now here's the good news. When you start out, you don't need that big pile of money there. If you've got a job and you're working, put some money aside, put some money aside. Start testing ideas, start learning. Start getting the knowledge, start, what, what do I wanna do? How am I gonna do it? Get a couple of people, just find one person to work with. Work with that person, get them results, test the model, get feedback, refine it, do it again, test it, refine it, do it again, test it, refine it, until you've got something, you're like, do you know what, I'm happy with this, and then put that out into the world. Because once you've got to that point, you'll be so confident when you put it out there, you'll be like, do you know what, this works. I know it works, because look, Here's all of the case studies. Here's all of the testimonials. Here's all of the stuff I've done for free. You don't have to say that. I'm just telling you. Here's all the stuff I've done for free to build myself up whilst I got myself ready. And now I'm out there. I'm ready. I'm going. Then you can launch. Have a big launch party. Get all of the people around you. Get all your target audience and do a proper launch. Jeff Walker style product launch formula. And get out there and do it that way. That's exactly what we're doing with Roberta. She's got her business, but we're relaunching it. So in a couple of months when she has her launch party and she takes off, she'll hit the ground running. Now you can, pre, you can take pre-orders up to the launch, you can do your launch, you can get out there, but there's nothing wrong with having a job whilst you're doing this. Like, I'm working, like, ask Stephanie, I live with her, she'll tell you what my day's like. You know, I get up nine o'clock, well, I, I start work at nine in the morning, although recently I've been starting at eight in the morning. I'm not finishing until like nine, ten at night. Now, there are times when I have days off, when I go out, been going to the comedy club, been relaxing, been seeing friends, been doing things. So, it's not hustle, 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 work, work, work. But right now, because of where I am, because of the process I'm going through, I work for six weeks and I have two weeks off. That's my model, that's what I do. I work for six weeks and I have two weeks off. So, I'm prepared to do whatever it takes for these six weeks to get my clients to where they need to be. I'm prepared to do that and I can do that. And the reason I can do that it's because I have systems in place. I have procedures, I have things for people to do. I'll sit on a call with my clients and then I'll give them some homework and I'll give them worksheets and I'll give them courses and I'll give them things to look at. And we'll jump on calls and I'll help them and we'll go through it. And they can tell you because they're going through the process. We're in like week four now of my six week course. And we're just about to get to the point where we're launching these funnels. Their funnels are all being built. Everyone's gone through. They've done all their numbers. They've figured it all out. They've done their sales funnels. They've figured it all out. Customer avatar. We're now at the point where they're getting ready to launch. Where they're building out the opt-in page and the landing page. And now it's going to get exciting. Last two weeks, we're going to push. My point is that I could never have been in this place if I hadn't have started building websites and made all the mistakes that I made. And I could never have done that if I hadn't had a job to actually allow me to focus on learning. So I had the job which allowed me to learn, then when I learned and I started taking clients on, I made mistakes and mistakes and mistakes, and I rebranded and I changed and I changed, and it took time. And I'm not telling you to copy me because the way I did it wasn't right, because there were many, many, many times when I ran out of money, when I got desperate, when I took on that client because I just needed them, when I put that post out that was really needy because I just needed a bit of extra money. You know, there's more than enough money out there. There's so much out there. Like, I'll give you an example. Look at what happened in London. You know, like, I, I, I just want to send a, you know, a message out to you to understand that anything can happen at any time. Anything can happen at any time. You have no control. Some madman could come driving along the pavement in his car and he could take you out and it's game over. You have no idea what's going to happen. Right? You do not want to spend every day of your life stressing and worrying and frustrated and living a life of shit that you're not enjoying. You need to be enjoying what you're doing. You need to love what you're doing. You need systems in place to help you do that. You need a team in place. That team needs to be able to manage without you. You need to be able to put your ego to the side so that you can actually help people. And when you can get to that place and you can do that and you're not doing it out of scarcity or fear or lack, you're doing it because you love it, because you're serving, because you're getting results and because it's a win-win, then you're in a good place. Now, to, to give you an example, when people say, I haven't got any money, there's no money, I set up a um, Just Giving page because I wanted to do something to help the, vic the families of the victims. I didn't know what to do. I was on the train, I was just leaving London, and I was like, what can I possibly do? Like, there's nothing I can do to help these people, this thing that's happened. And I don't want to go into the whole, it's terrorism, it's terrorist attack and everything. It was a man. It was a, a man who was, you know, had his ideas in his head and he, you know, it was a crime. As far as I'm concerned, it was murder. It was a crime. Okay? Now, when I look at it from that perspective, and when I look at what happened, the people in the community, the people not just in London, but around the world that come together, because I set up a Just Giving place, go, I want to help. 
And all I can think of doing is generating um, some funds for the families. So in the first day that I did it, it, it had a thousand pounds. And I was like, wow, you know, that's a thousand pounds that people have donated of their own money to help the families. Now, I didn't realize at the time, but I wasn't the only person that had this idea. And other people have done the same thing. Now, to give you an example, um, I can't remember the name of the group, but I think it's Muslims in London or... Um, it's a Muslim group that's in London, they set up the campaign as well. And because it had the whole Muslim attachment to it, the media picked up on it. And as a result, they've made like 20,000. So I've made 1,000, they've made 20,000, put that together and that's going out to the families. And I was like, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Now, consider that the Met Police also set up a funding page and that's had over 300,000 pounds donated by the general public um, to support the family of the police officer who lost his life. There is, the reason I'm telling you this is because like, there's money. People can give money away to help others. There's enough money out there. So if you're sitting there saying, I haven't got, no, I haven't got any money, there's no money. There's, there, are, there are people out there that are willing to give money away to help people. And that's just in light of the news of what's happened recently to give you some perspective. When you consider that there are venture capitalists, there are gr government grants, there are organisations, there are angels, there are, you know, there's dragons as well, but there's like the, the people out there that have money. There are people with an abundance of money out there. They have so much money that they are looking at where they can put it. They want to give their money to people who can generate more money. They want a return on their investment. They want more money but they're looking for safe investments, investments that are low risk. So if you can create an opportunity where you can actually articulate what it is you're gonna do and how you're going to do it, and you can articulate that message in a way that somebody with money understands and feels comfortable enough to give you their money, then you can start a business. And let me give you an example, I'm gonna leave you with this because I don't wanna ramble on too much. I put a Facebook post out put a Facebook post out about a year or so ago now. And all it said on this post, the only thing I put on this post is, I'm looking for somebody who wants to invest in a business. That was it. I'm looking for somebody who wants to invest in a business. Now what happened is I had a, a, a like, pretty much straight away when it went up was a like, it was before I was getting all my engagement, and I got a PM. And a PM come from a friend of mine who turned around and said, tell me more, I'm interested. That was it. It was pretty much straight away. And he just happened to be online. When I posted it, it showed up in his news feed and he just responded. And so I was like, hey, nice to meet you. Like, we were connected anyway, but I haven't really like, talked to him properly. I said, this is what I'm looking for. And I laid out exactly what I wanted. And I'll tell you now, I'm more than happy to tell you. So I wanted to do my book launch. So this was yeah, a couple of years ago. So I wanted to do my book launch. And I said, this is what I'm looking, to, looking for. I want £10,000. For that £10,000, I'm willing to give and there was some conditions of what I was willing to do and what I was willing to give. And I'm not going to go into the details of that out of respect for the investor, but that was the agreement, that, that I was going to give something in return, and to mitigate the risk, I, was go I, I did it as a loan. So I said, I'm going to give you back £1,000 every single month, and I'm also going to give you, on top of that, a percentage, a net percentage of the revenue that I make for all my digital sales and products. And so what happened is he was like, but I thought you was doing okay. Like you seem like you're fine. You don't need this. And I was like, well, I can be. Like I can continue to do what I'm doing, and I can continue to, you know, work and work and work and work. Or I can get an injection, do a proper launch, and put myself out there. And he bought into it. He loved the idea. He loved the concept. He believed in me. He believed in what I was doing. He he could see the value in it. And so he invested. And within 30 minutes, because I had to, I within 30 minutes of that post, I'd I'd, I'd talked to, talk to him. Had a quick conversation. He was happy. He was like, yep. Yeah, Done. I'd sent an email to a friend of mine, Laura, who drafted up a legal agreement. That comes straight back. And literally within an hour, I mean it was about two at most, I had the money in my bank account. I think we did £12,000. It was £12,000 over 12 months. So it's, that, there's money out there. That was from a Facebook post from someone I didn't know, but who had been following me because I'd put content out, because I'd built myself up, because he liked what he saw, because I kept going and kept going and kept going. I didn't give up. I had my job, but on the side, I just kept adding value, putting myself out there, putting myself out there, putting myself out there, not charging, not charging, not charging. And so I kept doing that. I'm not saying that's right, but that's what I did. And as a result, he invested. And when he invested, we managed to just 
hit the ground and it was good. Now, there's been ups and downs, you know, and, and we've struggled. And I've had a conversation with him where I didn't, I, 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 um, I broke the terms of my agreement with him um, for a period of time. And I, for most of you, if you know about the stuff I've had going on in my personal life, things, things got challenging. Now, my point is, and the reason I'm sharing this with you is because we're good friends. And he said, you know what? I've invested in you. And I've, I've made a friend out of this. And the money, I'm not even worried about. I know it will come. He's like, I know it will come. I'm not even worried about that. Sort yourself out. Like to have that relationship, to have that ability with an investor, when I'm sitting there thinking, oh my God, I don't want to let this person down. Like I've made mistakes. But if you don't get out there and play the game, then you're never going to fail. And if you don't fail, you never learn. And if you never learn, you're never going to reinvent yourself and you're never going to get better. So have a job. Have the nine till five. There is nothing wrong with having a nine till five. Get some money. Get a safety net behind you. And just go out there and start making mistakes. Start figuring stuff out. Start learning. Start playing about with whatever it is you want to do until you find something that you're good at. Like what I'm doing now, I love what I do. I love it. I love it so I can't explain to you how good it feels to do what I do. I love it. It juices me up. But I could never have seen this when I had a job back then. I just had to get started. And so that's all you need to do is get started. Plan. What are you going to do? How are you going to do it? Get started. And just, just value your time. Focus, balance, nutrition, exercise, mindset. That's all it is. Work on those things. You work on those things, your business will thrive. Whatever it is you choose to do. Have an amazing weekend. You could relax. You could work. You could learn. You could have fun. What are you going to do? It's your choice. It's not all about the hustle, right? I'm taking the weekend off. I'm at my mum's house, or my dad's house, my stepmom, picking my daughter up, picking Lily up at three o'clock. I'm taking the weekend off. I deserve it. I've worked hard this week. So it's not all about working constantly. You know, I posted, I got up at half four this morning. I wasn't doing that to brag. I was doing it because I know that people will be on there going, oh, you're lucky, you know, lucky for you. Because I know I'm opening up my new sales funnel next week. I know that when I open up my new sales funnel and I start recruiting people for my new course in May, and that happens next week, and I know because I know it's going to sell out. I have no, I'm no doubt in my mind. I know it's going to sell out. So when it does, and I'm posting, "Hey, look, I just made all this money in like a record amount of time," people are going to go, "Oh, you're so lucky." No, it's not luck. I'm working. I'm working hard so that I can have that, and so that I get that. So it's like, don't believe when you see the hype and the bullshit. I could go out right now, I could max out my credit cards, hire in a Ferrari, and I could drive around London recording a video, telling you how successful I am, getting people to opt in and buy my course. I could do that. But it's not real. And I'm all about being real. There are, there are a lot of people that are overtaking me, that are earning more money than me. There's a lot of people out there who are out there making a lot of noise. And some of you know this, and Roberta talked about this, you know, she listened to some of these people. And as a, as a result, she changed some things on her website on their advice and her stats tanked because of it. Because people are out there and they're just, they're just projecting. They're just telling you, this is what you should do, this is what you should do. But they have no idea who you are and what you're doing. That's why when I build websites, I don't, I don't just build websites anymore. We go deep. Like The first thing I do when I build a website is I'm like, let's look at your numbers. Let's look at how viable your business is before we even build a website for it. Because chances are you might have a hobby. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If you've got a hobby, that's great. If you can make some money on the side from your hobby, fantastic. But if you've got a business, business is brutal. Business is hard. Business has ups and downs. Like Business requires relentless, ongoing, constant, never-ending commitment. You can't stop. Business needs to keep churning. Like Business, it's hungry. It's like a child. It's like need, 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 want, want, want all the time. Until you get to a point where you build it big enough that it sustains itself. That growth, that initial growth is where most people fail. It's too steep. They give up. They see the people at the top and they're like, they're having an amazing time. I want to join them. And they try and jump. And you can't. You can't jump up a mountain. You have to crawl up it. It's the only way. Ideally, following the groove of the person who went before you. And I hope this helps. Colin, new balance, more patience for things go slow, but less frustration when things go wrong. Absolutely. In fact, Colin, I'm going to end this Facebook Live and I'm going to call you up right now, my friend, because we were meant to talk this morning and we didn't, and we're going to talk this afternoon. Nice one, Steve. Thanks for the inspirational working full time and trying to get things off the ground is hard, but you're really helping to keep me driven. Please keep doing what you're doing. I, Chris, I really appreciate it. I thank you. Look, at the end of the day, it's easy for me to sit here right now and say, Oh yeah, it's really good, it's really easy, like, you know, things are going really well. The whole reason that I've shared the good and the bad is because shit goes wrong. 
a lot. I just don't let it bother me anymore. Like if something goes wrong, it goes wrong. Now if something happens, it happens. Like, like I have problems. I have lots of problems, but they're here. I'm up here. Like I'm aware of them, but I just don't let, they don't consume me anymore. Like money, perfect example. When I was 50 grand in debt and I was like, 50 grand in debt, Psh, it's a number. I don't give a shit. What can I do to earn more? And I set a plan out to make 100 grand. Remember, 1st of March, I wanted 100 grand. I failed. I didn't get 100 grand. All right? Now, I don't see it as a failure now because I was like, this is where I am, 50 grand in debt. I want to make 100 grand. But as a result of wanting to make 100, I made 30. So I actually had to spend a load of that out and I had to put some aside. And there was a couple of people that got refunded. So it didn't actually turn out to be 30. It was like 28 in the end. But still, 28. I'm not complaining. That was a fucking great month. Great month. Paid 10 grand off my debt. Gone. Put some money aside. Invested in some things to make the business go further. To go, like, to, I know I've got advertising budget. So I know when I launch this next week, out of 10 people I'm taking on, I've already got three. I need seven people. And I'll probably get that just by putting some Facebook posts out. Like, why do you think I've been putting all this content out every day, relentlessly? Because if one who's following it now, some of these videos have thousands of views. You know, I've got people who are opting in, I've got people who are subscribing, I've built my list. All of my stats across all of my platforms have been growing. So now, when I turn on next week and I flick that switch and I say, hey, I'm doing a new course, here's a landing page, and people go, wow, and they buy it, and I'm like, wow, look what happened. People go, oh, it's alright for you, oh, yeah, you, and I go, oh, look, I made 20 grand in an hour or whatever I say, because I don't know what it's going to be. But whatever that is, people will look at it and go, oh, wow. But they won't see every day, midday, regardless of where I am, what I'm doing. Every day, midday, Facebook Lives. Every day. That takes commitment. That takes time. Clients, every day. First thing in the morning, all throughout the day, last thing at night. Driving here, there, going, doing all of these things. All the stuff I'm doing behind the scenes, that's the work. That's what you need to do. Gary Vaynerchuk, I'm going to leave it on this because he's a real uh, inspiration role model for me at the moment. I love what he's doing. He started before anyone even knew his name, before anybody knew the name Gary Vaynerchuk, when he first started out with Wine Library TV, he took his parents' company. It was doing three million. Still a very, very good company. But he took that and he turned it from three to 60 million before anyone even knew his name. The whole reason he's doing what he's doing now is because he put in the work. He put in all of that effort, all of that work, before anyone even knew him. That's what gives him the right to do what he's doing now. Because he's been there and done it. Too many people don't want to put in the work. They just want the, the fame and fortune. They just want the social media profile. You can have the social media profile. You can buy the fake likes. You can buy the fake engagement. But you never, you know you cheat. The only person you're ever going to cheat is yourself. It's not real. All right, some people might buy into your services, but when you can't deliver... What do you think is going to happen? Do you think they're going to give you raving testimonials when they realise that you're full of shit? Like, there's no point in building something up for hype and for show. You build something up, build it up because it makes a difference to people. So you can feel good about doing what you're doing. That takes time, takes work, takes effort. Start with a minimum viable product. Start by going back looking at my videos. Start by taking advice of people who have done it before. And do that. Get through that, but keep the job. If you've got a job, keep the job. Get the money coming in. Start it on a side. Little side hustle. Get some reviews. Get some testimonials when there's no real pressure. But discipline yourself. Be committed. Put in the work. Put in the effort. And then, once your side hustle, once your business that you're starting is making equal money to your job, quit. Focus on that. Replace it. And then take it to the next level because then you can use all that time and energy in your business and take it to the next level. Hope it makes sense. I hope it's been useful. I'm going to go. Have an amazing weekend. I'll look back for all the comments and everything. Like I said, I'm going to take a weekend off. I'm going to chill out with my family. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the mums that are out there. I hope you have an amazing Mother's Day in the UK. I'm going to go and see my mum. I'm going to go and spend some time with her. So I hope you get to do the same thing as well. Reach out to someone you love. Spend some time with them. Balance. Work hard. Hustle. Do whatever it is that you need to do that's going to make you successful. And to make you happy. Have a great day. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.